Well, here it is, a little 1500 watt go power. Here's a little bit of information, spec sheet. You can pause that. All right, uh, let's open it. This has never been opened. Made in China, this is. Well, it's gotta be good if it's made in China. Some stuff they make is good. This is a pure sine wave. Pure sine wave. I think these are pretty good, especially for being made in China. For, for what you cut, for what they cost. Okay, I'm gonna pause this. It is really windy today. You know Well, there you have it. Looks like a good one to me. Let's put it up. Groovy, man. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't video me putting that up there, but uh, it went something like this with me holding it. making a video get one more screw to go but you can uh, use your imagination this uh, size screw and uh, type work great in the uh, chipboard particle board or whatever it is wafer board they're called uh, pan head Phillips Number 14, three quarter inch. Anyway, they grab good in the, uh, this kind of board right here. You've seen it before. Alright. Hey, when you hook up your inverter, and your power leads to your batteries, you want to have an A&L fuse like that. This is the best one they sell on eBay. Cost about fifteen twenty dollars. I think I paid fifteen for mine. Maybe it's a little more. It's worth it. It's called an A nail, hundred and fifty amp. They don't give you no trouble. It's the best kind. It says Blue C on the back. That's the one to get right there. If you want the best. All right. That's for safety. You gotta have that so you don't burn down your shed or your home. Oh, a little box of goodies here. All right, now we have some uh, thermal end connections, butt connectors, and uh, we want to fuse those uh, solar panels to the batteries. I'll show you where that goes. It goes right by the battery because the battery has a whole bunch of amps and it, it, after the on the positive terminal at, right after that anything that touches that wire w will turn red and burn it down whatever it is alright we gotta put those two things on so I'll show you how to do that okay this must be the most common mistake that everybody makes when they do their solar. They don't put a fuse on their battery. You want a fuse right here 
where the positive power comes out of the battery. See it goes up into the the charge controller actually puts power in to the batteries there. And also you take your power off right there. So we'll have a a wire going up to here to the inverter. But anyway, that would be where you would want to put a fuse like this. So I'll put it about right here. Chop the wire and put a little butt connector in. Alright. First I'm going to undo this so there won't be any sparks. Get back with you. Alright, now I got it all cramped together. But it doesn't have a fuse yet. That's how you want to fuse your solar panels. Well, actually, your battery. You don't have to fuse your solar panels, really. I guess they, some people do. But as long as that's fused, we got to find a fuse. And I'll come back. And I found one. A 30 amp fuse. That'll work. I'm not worried about my solar panels causing the fire. I'm more worried about these batteries. They're the one with all the amps. And they will cause a fire. I'm trying to get this in here. I'll come back. Okay, there you have it. Put this back on here. Now my batteries are fused. If uh, this wire was to break, uh, between here and anywhere else on that line, all the way out to there, it uh, wouldn't burn anything down. It's not fused right here, but uh, I think it'll be all right. All right. I probably could have got that a little bit closer, but I think that's good enough. Now, we'll move on to a different kind of fuse for the inverter. Okay, I'm just going to have this about a foot down here. It's about the length of this, this wire that I got here. So should go like that. Alright, well. I'll come back to you. I can't do that on video. Okay, so see that screw? I'm gonna unscrew a little bit. in there. I'm not going to try to do it on camera. It's going to be too hard. Well, goodness, I finally got it in there. I had to trim some of those off. I guess one off's a little bit big for this, or maybe I didn't. I should have started with a really smooth piece of wire. But anyway, I didn't want to shorten this any. But, got it in the hole. Finally. Wasn't easy turn a little bit off. I think it's a little bit big. You don't want any frayed <laughs> stranded wires. I got a few. You 
sure don't want them to touch the other side. Let's duck them out over here to the right. <clears throat> Alright. And we'll hook this up. like so Sorry for all the grunt. <laughs> I hate it when people do that. Alright, thanks for watching. This part, I'll come back later. Okay, um, this looks like a forklift battery. Wire, it's real heavy. And this one is, uh, copper clad. And I know I told you guys not to use proper clad, but for temporary, since this is so short and we're ready to go. We'll just hook it up. It'd be easy. I have used it before and it, it worked. Um, it's not that great a wire though. I think it'll work for now. That forklift battery wire would be good as sure as long. <laughs> if we get an electromagnetic bolts bomb, I will have a wire that I can hook up. Another one you saw. I don't have a real solid copper ground wire. I need to get one. I have a uh, copper clad. Supposedly the copper clad during an EMP bomb will short out. But I don't know. Who knows really what's going to happen. Well, maybe I shouldn't hook it up just yet. Let's get the ground on it. That seems a little bit too thick. I may have to use that other wire. That connection it doesn't want to go on it. Well, let's hook up the ground. Well, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I can. This is copper clad, and it's real. We got a thick jacket on it, and the wire is a lot smaller than that one. I couldn't even hardly get the real one in the hole. The real copper wire. Uh, I think this aluminum something. I don't know. It's pretty junky. I hope it works. <clears throat> it went right in the hole. I'll be back. And it's it's plenty long. I think I got like 10 feet of it. I'm gonna cut it off. I don't really like this wire anyway. But right there. And do this on video. <coughs> well, I'll be back. I have to use both hands. 
I'm going to use this cheap, thin, gold-plated connection. It costs me a lot of money, actually. Because uh, it'll give me more room on that deal right there. But anyway, I'm going to crimp that down with some pliers. I'll be back. I will say one thing for this really thin stuff. It's really easy to work with. When I'm moving it with these pliers, I got a pretty good crimp on it. <clears throat> All right. And I don't remember if you're supposed to connect the hot or the ground first. Well, I'm going to connect the ground first. Actually, we'll go did the hot first, but I don't think it really matters. But it might. <laughs> A nice tight fit there. I like these wing nuts, they're easy to use. So, I want it out of the way of that filler cap right there. If I can get it. I'm thinking about jerking my wire. Well, I have to fix that now. Alright, I'm finally ready. For my big... Whoa! Hook up. I hate it when it does that. That's what it does. Here we go. I'm just going to have to go through with it. What this inverter's <coughs> off. It's off. That's the caps filling up with electricity. Here we go. It's going to really pop. <clears throat> well, it did that one time. <clears throat> I hope it works. After all that, everything's all hooked up. Let's find out. Looks good. Now we need to plug something in. And I found something to plug in. My ceramic heater. Let's throw four hundred watts. Let's see what happens. Heater's off. We can turn it on now. And There's a little hesitation here on this end. Like it has uh, features that uh, it, it goes off to save energy and then it takes it a while to come on. Well, it works. Voila. All is good. I need an amp meter and a voltage meter. Oh, it kicked on. Well, that's it for my installation. Uh, I'm going to upload this video.